Everything in this world revolves around computers, and by proxy, processing power. The phone that you use to make calls and texts, the data centers that allow you to access the internet, and even the cash registers at the grocery store. Like it or not, the world runs on computers, so the faster the computers, the faster the world as we know it runs. The part of the computer that controls it all is the central processing unit, or CPU. For a long time, Intel had a near monopoly on these. But that is all changing. The devices that we all carry around are, you know, exponentially like huge amount of times faster than what we use to go to the moon, you know, and then we carry we carry those around in our hand. So on the Mac side, you know, we've done this huge, you know, uh, swirl of we started off with the power PC and actually Intel was making the power PCs for a while. Um, and then the big switch from Mac to go to Intel was a huge factor for us because we could now run our Macs as PCs if we wanted to, right? So the phone that's in your pocket to, you know, watching TV and the cable boxes that, that drive what, what goes on TV. Um, I think everything stems from uh, a processing power and, and a central processing unit. Um, I think the, the most relatable thing that people use on a daily basis and pretty much every minute of the day is their cell phone that's in their pocket. Uh, I think that's probably the easiest one to see is, has taken such a, uh, a, a drastic um, pull from, from a CPU, you know, certainly as companies uh, advance on CPU, the phones keep getting better and better, bigger screens, faster doing games and whatnot. So I think the cell phone is probably the, the most relatable to uh, the advancement of a processor. So the computer processor does a lot of work when loading things in Google Chrome and Safari. And so, um, definitely helps having a better processor when you're doing work like that and even for people that are like say graphic designers or do work in uh, other apps that you can download on your computer the very CPU heavy early on in the career if you if you looked at Intel you also immediately thought of Microsoft and I think um, you know the the two of them partnering together um, and using marketing power like that has made Intel a front runner in the name of processors. Um, you know, I know at least for me growing up, um, you know, th there were opportunities for Microsoft uh, like learning programs um, where I'd actually be able to speak with Microsoft vendors and they would partner with Intel on these programs. So um, yeah, definitely marketing is one of the, the big ones that made Intel synonymous with Microsoft, made Intel a household name. You know, we're all Apple. We've been all Apple for forever, right? Right from day day one. And actually, my brother, who's the network manager in, in the schools, he's the first ever technician in the in the school. He brought the number one computer, the first computer ever to need him, right? All those years ago. So, and you know, it's we've always been Apple. There's a few PCs around in the cafeteria, whatever it may be. And we have servers in the back end, but um, we're all Apple. Uh, you know, the computers and, you know, leaps and bounds over the past five and 10 years. And I think even if you look at 20 or 30 years before that, um, computers keep getting, uh, faster. They keep getting more powerful, uh, in a smaller scale. I mean, you wouldn't see computers like we have today that have the amount of power, amount of memory and storage, uh, in such a small form factor. I mean, they were massive years ago. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. They become lighter, more portable. They're easy to walk around with and transport, but still have the power underneath that you need to get the things done. Your average laptop, you know, Windows or PC or even Unix, you know, you don't have to worry about it at all. Anything in the last eight years, you know, or, or so could run a pretty good Zoom session. I, eight years may be a stretch on the Mac side for sure. Um, but the, the, the problem we have is so that, you know, one of the things that, you know, as you know, uh, computers have gotten smaller and smaller for us, right? So um, one of your questions I know was about, you know, the change in technology um, over the over the years. And for schools, the advent of the iPad and the Chromebook, and the Chromebook in particular, because the iPad has been around for a while, but the Chromebook really gave us an opportunity to put a device in every kid's hand. But perhaps even more exciting is I can show you Rise in the product. So for the first time, take a look 
at our Ryzen product. This is one of the first off of the manufacturing line. You can believe we're building lots and lots of these right now. Every Ryzen processor in manufacturing will have the Ryzen logo etched on the lid with an incredible amount of horsepower under the hood. The Intel processors are generally good for business requirements and business needs. Um, a lot of the servers that I deploy and manage in my business are, are primarily Intel based because they're good at uh, basic computations and calculations for um, software. But AMD has really kind of um, focused more on the consumer end, especially looking towards gaming graphics and stuff, um, which, you know, a, a large portion of the industry and, and consumers at home, they're looking for that tile, type of computer usage. So AMD has found their niche. They've certainly uh, used it to their advantage. I wouldn't say exploit it, but they've used it to their advantage to get into people's homes, make themselves a recognizable name. And the way that Intel was it's now synonymous with Microsoft. I think AMD is trying to to make that synonymous connection with gaming. So I think that's that's how they've gotten their foot in the door and they've they've made some serious headway. They've basically flipped the switch on Intel really. Intel I I remember Intel it was like you couldn't find a computer without Intel. Like all the computers have Intel like an Intel CPU. And then all of a sudden the past couple of years AMD's really stepped up their game with their their uh, computer chips and um, they're really, they're really, they're honestly taking over because their their CPUs are just as good as Intel's, if not better, and for a uh, less money, having a much better CPU definitely improves your performance a lot. If I'm getting the same performance for less of a price, I mean I'm taking that a hundred times out of a hundred. Laptops are a whole different. Like everyone likes laptops, like. Laptop is like a computer, except I can carry it around. Even though I have to charge it, whatever, I, it's a computer that I can carry in my in my bag. Like that's just like the perfect thing. And so I think if AMD either partners up with a brand, say like an Alienware or a Razer, and inserts their computer chips into um, their their laptops, or they start their own brand, I think one of something like that is definitely a great route for them to go down. The idea behind the Chromebook is it, it, it levels the playing field. The, the teachers are supposed to teach to the Chromebook so that they everyone everyone has access to at least a base, you know, a base level of internet access and uh, access to all those tools. Kids would come in like if one kid does a presentation for a senior project on this beautiful iMac that can do all this stuff, and another kid does it on the Chromebook, do they get graded the same? <laughs> when you have these two competing companies, or at least the two front runners. Uh, they will do everything they can to pull more market share. Um, they'll do everything they can to one up the other company and make their product look better. So whether that's make a faster processor or to make it cheaper or to make it cooler so it's not requiring more resources of the computer to keep it cool, um, it, it makes the overall cost of the computer cheaper. So for a regular consumer that's not necessarily concerned about the speed of the processor they have in their laptop because all they need to do is basic word processing functionality. Um, to them, they'll see the benefit of the overall cost of the computer uh, coming way down. Um, you know, and then you obviously have the benefit for, for those high-end uh, power users, gaming, servers, whatever. Um, they also see the benefit that you can pack more power into a smaller punch. Um, and again, you know, when cost goes down, uh, certainly demand will go up. Uh, I think the, the consumer base uh, across the world um, is is moving towards a, a better knowledge of computers overall. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of more of the consumers of computers are, are younger and they're getting experience with computers earlier on in their career uh, or their life. And, and they're starting to do research on what they're actually purchasing. Um, and I think as the, they do more research, they're going to be a better informed consumer and able to decide for themselves is it Intel? Is it AMD? They know that, you know, one processor does work better for certain functions and one works better for another. Um, so I think the more educated consumers that you have, the more well-informed they are about computer components and um, technical uh, pieces. I, I think you're going to see AMD um, stay where it is, if not grow. Um, I think that's a, that's a benefit of the, the kind of the economy that we have, that uh, there are these competitive uh, businesses that are trying to leapfrog each other. 
Um, and I think, yeah, I certainly think AMD is, is here to stay. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to hurt the consumer market, right? It, it, the computers are going to be less available. Um, it, it certainly, you know, that'll kind of filter into its own category of, of price will jump around based on the rarity of computers and, and the specific model that you want and the specific components you have inside. Um, I don't think it's going to change the dynamic of how these companies are looking at computers from a build perspective. They're still going to be um, trying to one up each other, still try to, to move the needle and advance the technology that they have inside the processor and inside the, the computer as a whole. Um, you know, I think this is going to hurt more consumers more than it is business that, you know, we're not going to be able to find computers when we go to the local store or, or search online. But, um, you know, I, this is just a, a, a demand kind of thing. I mean, this is an ebb and flow of business. Um, unfortunately, the pandemic has caused a lot of these companies to run out of resources, whether, with, whether it's manpower or the, you know, the actual commodity resources that they use to build the processor. Um, so we'll see a, a downtick in uh, available computers, but um, yeah, I don't see it lasting terribly long. I mean, these companies need to start pivoting and understanding how to make processors with the resources they have, um, you know, up their demand uh, on the resources that they need and, and how they manufacture these devices. So yeah, the, the shortage we have on CPU and GPU will definitely go into next year, but I, I can't imagine it's going to go on for years and years. When I first ordered my CPU, um, they canceled my order because they didn't have any. They, we ordered them and they're like, sorry, we're out. And I had to wait two weeks to then order it to get it in a month. It's just like, there's so much, there's so many factors. Like, like, so most of, most of the stocks, the, um, processors come from not the United States. They're not made in the United States. They're made in somewhere in China. And with China, with all their COVID protocols and other countries, all their COVID protocols, the, the chips have to go through one thing and then they have to make sure that they're durable and they're ready to be shipped. And then they're shipped out to some place where they're flown over to the United States and they're dri drove, driven to um, post office. And it's just like an endless process and it's just like adding time and adding time. And I think stock shortages are definitely from COVID. I think it all runs back to COVID, even with the traveling and with people wanting more and more CPUs. COVID is just, it's made computer companies very happy, but for people that want computers, it's made it very difficult. Well, it's been, you know, it's been a challenge. Uh, the, the one thing we've learned for sure is uh, be flexible, right? You have to make, uh, you have to make an infrastructure and a, uh, you know, the, the equipment we have be as flexible as possible because what we've learned is no matter what we thought, it's going to change, right? So we went from last spring thinking that we were going to be remote for a whole year and and then moving to this sort of hybrid model where everyone thought, well, that's better, right? Well, it, it's not necessarily better because when you're Zooming from home, everyone's, you know, everyone's connections are from home to Zoom and then, you know, each individual bandwidth is helping out. But when you're in school, you know, that's a whole other ballgame. That's our whole net network and our infrastructure. So the Chromebooks are very limited, right? They're they're just a browser, basically. They don't, they don't have a lot of processing power. Two, yeah, yeah. Some of them are four gigs of RAM. Some of them are two gigs of RAM. They're, they're, they're really slow. But when you look at their actual processor, it's a very light mobile processor and that designed to have that battery last a long time. That was great when we're doing regular, you know, Google, Google Classroom, you know, the, the Google Suite, just surfing the web. But that video stuff, uh, the Zoom plugin for for um, the Chromebooks was a was a problem. Now Google Meet worked better because it was a Google product, and they they scaled it better. And Zoom released something back in September that helped us all out. Um, it, they they essentially made it work more efficiently with the, with the internal processor. But it's still we have older Chromebooks. I don't know if you, at the high school you've seen them. They're the blue and white or gray and white Chromebooks. They're the the um, Asus the first ones we had. Those ones had a lot of trouble on Zoom. And then, and then as soon as you start doing it, like right now, your blurred background or my background, that people don't realize it, but that's video intensive. Like you, and you have to, even to do this, you have to have, be running like, um, you know, OS 10, 15 or 10, 14 or whatever, like on the Mac side, it, it, it is fairly intensive. Like, and, and it requires certain, um, a certain level to do that. I think COVID has made, I mean, I mean, certainly myself, my parents, okay to computer probably a big impact of that was COVID and being at home a lot of the time and so 
having a, having a computer that you can use at home instead of going out and buying a laptop that you have to charge every day. Like having a computer like plugged into the wall can turn on whenever. It's definitely very nice. And so I think after COVID ends, I think definitely people are going to start looking at it differently and be like, yeah, maybe, maybe the computer is right for me when I'm home. But I just don't think there'll be as many of them because people will be out and about more. I certainly feel that that after the pandemic goes away and we get back to whatever the new definition of normal is, um, you know, I think business, school, all aspects of our lives are going to be changed for the better. Um, I think there's an understanding of more flexibility in our lives. We're not kind of bound to these physical locations to either work or school. So there's always going to be a need for computers. Um, and I certainly think that that you know, consumers are going to move towards laptops and these portable devices to um, fulfill the need of getting work done, whether it's school or, or business requirements, but um, in a comfortable setting. So if they're able to travel, but still have access to the resources that they need, um, I think, you know, in, in the long term, this pandemic has actually kind of shaped our market for the better. People are a little more interested uh, and wanting to be more knowledgeable in computers. And then I think laptops are um, the perfect avenue for it. And, and I certainly think that's uh, one of the big things we're gonna see probably the next couple of years. Uh, it's, uh, it has made laptops the necessary thing. Uh, I think more than anything else in the pandemic, it is it certainly, um, laptops have been the number one spike in purchasing. I think, um, you know, you look at all the requirements and the demands of people now working from home, um, students taking class from home. Um, laptops are the most efficient device for that. I mean, desktop computer certainly has more power, but you're limited. You can't walk around. You can't move from your bedroom to your couch, to your living room, to your kitchen, which is where my office is. Um, with a desktop laptop is, is by far, uh, probably the the most portable easiest to use and most efficient solution for i mean outside of pandemic regular demands but i think the pandemic did generally um made it a much more necessary tool in our lives i built my computer during covid and there are, it took months for me to get my processor and the the prices i mean although they aren't as bad as some other parts in the com in computers they're still not great because of such high demand. Like people, at, during quarantine, people want computers. They want to upgrade, upgrade. They want to play games. They want to be able to do work. They want to run everything faster. Because in our time, things are just getting faster and faster with technology. Um, when you start looking at the thermodynamics of a computer and the fact that the laptop, most consumers are looking for the smaller, the lighter, the thinner laptop. Um, you run out of available cooling capacity in the laptop to to make the processor that more more powerful. Um, you know, you do have your consumers that are heavily focused on gaming, and they can uh, kind of accept that a larger laptop will mean that they have better processing power. Um, but for the 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 lion's share of consumers. They want things smaller. They want things lighter. And, and that is always a, a problem you're going to run into. Um, a desktop has the, the real estate to put a higher power processor inside of it. It can cool it off better. Um, you're not going to likely see a desktop catch on fire where a laptop certainly is possible. The more components you stick inside of it, certainly not likely, but it's more possible. Um, so yeah, I, I certainly hope that companies find a way to make processors that don't generate the heat that they do now, um, where we can see higher power CPUs inside a smaller form factor laptop that um, is just as powerful as a desktop. But I think there are some technical limitations that they need to overcome there. Having a, having a computer that you can use at home instead of going out and buying a laptop that you have to charge every day, like having a computer like plugged into the wall can turn on whenever, it's definitely very nice. And so I think after COVID ends, I think definitely people are going to start looking at it differently and be like, yeah, maybe, maybe the computer is right for me when I'm home. But I just don't think there'll be as many of them because people will be out and about more. Uh, I think if they keep up what they're doing, keep up the competition, and maybe even scale up a bit to some really high end, but maybe a, a bit pricey, 
CPUs, I think they could definitely last because that's what they're doing right now, and they are they are storming away. They they are taking over, as I said. Like they're they're really just they're they're doing everything right, which is it's probably rare for most things. Honestly, there you never really find a company that does everything right. But like AMD, they're making great great durable chips. They're making them for a pretty affordable price. They're making them last long and they have great performance and great reviews and that's basically all you could ask from a cpu based on how i use computers um i would go intel you know my son convinced me to go amd i have the amd ryzen 5 3600x i think i think either way honestly i'd probably go amd